Hi and welcome back. We will now see how to code the buy sell rules for moving average crossovers. A moving average is the most simple price based study which we will use to code our hell world's strategy. Now before we proceed to the buy and sell, you should understand the long and short cycle. You can take two types of positions in the market, a long or a short. To enter a position, means you have taken an exposure in the market from your money. Investors mostly do long only trading. That is they buy first and then sell later. If you buy and then sell, you, you exit, cover or close your position. Shutting the market means that you first sell and buy back later. You will sell what you do not own with chances of making money when you buy back at a later time. Note that the long and short cycles are totally independent. The Pi-Algo Trade Library allows you to take both long and short positions. Since we are working on the daily data holding trades for several months, we will first code only for the long side trades. From the moving average studies, our trading premise was that we will buy when the fast moving average crosses above the slow moving average. We will sell when the fast moving average crosses below the slow moving average. This means we will open a long position when the fast moving average goes above the slow moving average. We will exit the long position when the fast moving average goes below the slow moving average. Ok, so now let's move to the code. I have slightly modified the code used for plotting the moving averages to also generate the moving average signals. Let me highlight the changes in the two codes. In the earlier code, we did not define anything in the onBus function. Now, in this function, we can define bar by bar how the buy and sell happens based on the moving averages. The first thing that I code is, if the slow SMA is none, then return nothing. For example, we are using a 15 period slow moving average. So the slow moving average needs data for at least 15 days to show a value. For the first 14 days, the slow moving average will be null. And so, we cannot have either a buy or sell when either of these moving average is null. In this case, the function will return null. Second, if current position is null, it means if currently there is no position, then it will check whether the fast moving average is above the slow moving average. If that is found true, then we enter long. If fast moving average is less than the slow moving average, then we exit the current position. The position class in PyAlgo trade is very useful. Now suppose that there is no long position, but the fast moving average goes below the slow moving average. In this case, the exit market function will not make any change to the current position. After a long entry and a long exit, we update the position to none. We use the on enter ok method to tell us when order enter a position has been filled. When the order is filled, it will get the execution info from that order. We are saving the execution price of the trade in the format up to two places of decimal. Similarly, the on exit ok method tells us when the order to exit a position is filled. Again, if the sell order is filled, we save the execution price in a format up to two places of decimal. These are the changes made in a class template when we move from plotting a moving average to actually generating the buy and sell from the moving average. In the function to run this code, I have made a small difference. That is, to plot the buy and sell signals also on the chart. So this is what we get when the strategy is run. You can see all the buy and sell arrows whenever the two moving averages cross. Also, it prints down all transactions. You may now be curious to know whether the strategy is making any money or not. To find this out, wait for the lecture in which we will backtest this strategy. The process of backtesting includes several metrics to estimate the profitability of a strategy. Thank you for attentively listening to this lecture. We will now move forward to generate signals from the MACD indicator.